okay so the audio seems to do something here so that means it should work no okay all right so lecture 18 no 18 okay lecture 19 okay <clears throat> so don't count the tutorial classes it's not counted right all right so the last thing we were saying was uh, basically bpsk over awgn okay so you can see this uh, audio bar moving out right so if at all it, it freezes let me know okay otherwise my audio my voice will not get recorded okay so we've been looking at <coughs> using examples of simple codes over with with BPSK modulation over an AWGN channel and how will the optimal receiver look like? We looked at two receivers. What are the two, two different optimal receivers we looked at? One was ML, right? Which, which would reduce, which would, well, the way you derive that is by starting and assuming that you minimize the block error probability. The other receiver that we saw is what I call bitwise MAP, which is presumably going to minimize the bit error probability. Okay, but both of these are optimal in practice. You will see both of them have very little difference. Okay, in any figure of merit, both of them will be uh, very similar. Okay, so we'll begin. We'll begin by looking at one more example to just to drive home the whole point. Okay, <coughs> so maximum likelihood became equivalent to what? Minimum distance, right? Minimum what distance? Euclidean distance. In fact, for BPSK, you can go one step further and say it's the same as what maximum dot product, right? Maximum correlation is also the same. Okay, but bitwise MAP, uh, we did a whole bunch of simplifications, and finally we saw the best way to write it is what using using likelihood ratios. Now, I mean, use likelihood ratios. You can simplify the expression a little bit and write something. Uh, right, something that looks reasonable at least. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's pick an example, slightly more complicated than before, and then write down the actual expressions for both of these decoders for that uh, code. Just basically write down a description of what you would do if you have to do ML decoding or bitwise MAP decoding. Okay, so here's the example we'll take. <coughs> I want to take a reasonably complicated example, so I'll pick n equals six and k equals three. Okay. And my code is going to be generated by, I'll take a linear code. We'll take, what shall we take? We'll take uh, an NET, any three linearly independent would do. One, zero, zero. I'll, I'll take something very simple. Oops, excuse me. <coughs> okay, so maybe I should take something that's slightly different. 0, 1, 0. <coughs> we'll take uh, what shall we take? 1, 1, 0. Okay, and then uh, 0, 0, 1. We'll take uh, 0, 1. Okay, so this is my code. Okay, so the way you can see the first three bits. First three bits I've chosen to be systematic, right? If you write it as a generator matrix, you'll get the identity matrix. So of course this is nice and linearly independent. There's no problem. So I want you to spend some time and write down a description for the maximum likelihood decoder and the bitwise MAP decoder. Yes. This is a basis. No, this is this is just a basis vector. This is not a set of all code words. I don't have the all zero code words for this. Okay, so I know this is a little bit of a drudgery. I I think there is a point there. Okay, eventually you'll see this. The so I wanted to show I I want you to realize at the end of the day that when I describe some decoder, the fact that it works so well is pure magic. Okay, so if you don't do this drudgery and work through and see the maximum likelihood decoder and the bitwise MAP decoder and how painful it will be even for such a small block length, you will not realize how amazing it is when I finally give you a decoder which works very close to these decoders. Okay, which is practical, which is implementable, which is possible to, in fact, it's be, being implemented today in practical chips. Okay, so that wonder will not come unless you go through this drudgery once. Okay, so even if it is a little bit painful, list out all the eight code words, 
try to write a description for the maximum likelihood decoder how will the description for the maximum likelihood decoder be okay suppose you have a received vector r which is r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 r6 okay you should say you will evaluate for instance <coughs> eight different correlations right and pick the maximum so you have to say argument of maximum of all those things what are each of those things <coughs> okay so it's not too difficult to write down the maximum likelihood Okay, you have to start by listing out all the code words and maybe even all the symbol vectors, right? Or maybe if you if you can read it off from the code word itself, it's not too bad, but write it down. so I'll do my own calculation here you don't have to look at the screen and continue to keep doing your own way. This is the code. Okay. So, what are the various correlations that an ML decoder has to evaluate if you have to write it down? So, the correlations will have to be R1 plus, R2 plus, R3 plus. So, until R6, that is the first correlation corresponding to the all zero code word. The code word on the right will give you what correlation? Minus R1, minus R2, minus R5, minus R6, plus R3, plus R4. Right? That will be the next correlation. The correlation here will be minus R1, minus R4 minus R6 plus R2 plus R3 plus R5. That will be this correlation. What will be the next correlation? <coughs> minus R1 minus R3. I am just writing all the minuses together and the pluses together. You can do it in any way you want. It's just I just like the looks of it when you write all of those, those together. R4 minus R5 plus R2 plus R6. Okay, what is the next correlation? R1 plus R3 plus R6 minus R2 minus R4 minus R5. Okay, R1 plus R5 minus R2 minus R3 
minus r4 okay r1 plus minus r6 right uh, do i get that right so oh, this one more r6 term right okay r1 plus r2 plus r4 minus r3 minus r5 minus r6 okay minus r1 minus r2 minus r3 plus r4 plus r5 plus r6 okay so anytime you want to do ml decoding what do you have to do look at all the six values that you received evaluate each of these things one of them will be maximum corresponding to that you pick out that code word as the code word that was most likely code word that was transmitted <coughs> okay this is what you do for the uh, these are the dot products right for mld okay so try to write down the bitwise map expression for say bit 1 bit 2 and bit 3 okay those are the three message bits right maybe those are the only three bits i care about i don't care about the other three bits so right try to write down the expression for those three bits at least then let's see how it looks okay so to write down that expression for the first bit i need to divide my code into two halves the, co the set of all code words which have zero in the first position and the set of all code words which have one in the first position okay so if i have to say tick the code words which have one those are the code words which have one in the first position right so now if i have to write down say the okay so i'll use some terms here so i'll say li small li is what e power 2 ri by sigma square so it's the this is the intrinsic likelihood ratio for each bit okay so from here <coughs> so the final likelihood ratio will be what the product of the intrinsic and the extrinsic likelihood ratio so how do you compute the extrinsic likelihood ratio you have to use that formula okay you sum over all code words which have zero in the ith position then some product of certain <coughs> likelihoods according to where the zeros are okay and then you divide by sum over all code words which have one in the ith position product of the likelihoods wherever you have zeros okay so suppose if i have to write down i'm going to write down capital l1 which is the a posteriori likelihood ratio for the first bit okay so it's a product of l1 times what what do you have in the numerator first term maybe corresponds to the all zero code word so that's going to be l2 l3 l4 l5 l6 okay the second term maybe corresponds to this guy here so that will be l3 l6 am i right and the third term is l2 l4 fourth term is l4 is that clear okay and then in the denominator you would have what <coughs> all the other guys okay i'm sorry oh this is l5 yeah you're right this is l5 okay so in the denominator <coughs> what would you have okay so the first code word will give you me l2 l3 l5 plus what next would be l3 l4 plus l2 l6 plus l4 l5 l6 okay so that's my a posteriori likelihood ratio it's a simple thing to write down at the end of the day right so once you know the split it's very easy so please take some time and write down l2 and l3 i mean there's a valuable lesson at the end of the day okay so you may not believe me now but there will be one lesson which we will take from here just an observation <clears throat> nothing nothing very great but we will observe something after writing l2 and l3 okay i'm going to write you can look at the screen to make sure if i'm doing it correctly or not but go ahead and do it on your own 
Okay. Let me know if I'm making a mistake. L6, huh? No? Oh no, no, no. Okay, the same term will usually never show up in the numerator and the denominator. So we can use that as a eliminating tool. Okay, so, so you have two sets of expressions here. Let me know if I make any mistake. I think this looks okay to me, but I could make one or two mistakes here, but it's not too critical. I, I want you to appreciate something, okay? So you have one set of expressions that you have to evaluate for the maximum likelihood decoder. And you have another set of expressions which you have to evaluate for the bitwise MAP decoder, okay? So let, I mean, the same problem can be posed for the maximum likelihood decoder as well as for the bitwise MAP decoder, but I'm going to post it for this bitwise MAP decoder can go back and figure out uh, the same problem for the maximum likelihood decoder. Suppose I tell you, I give you L1 through L6. Okay, maybe I do the exponentiation already. I give you L1 through L6. The problem I pose is, what is the minimum number of additions and multiplications I have to do? Forget about the division. Okay, maybe there is a division which I have to do three divisions. Okay, so let's let's keep that aside. Okay, there's a way to get around that. What is the minimum number of additions and multiplications that I have to do? To evaluate capital L1, capital L2, capital L3 as ratios. Okay, how would you answer that question? Do you think you can look at this long enough and come up with an answer? First of all, one, one easy way of saying it is, I just evaluate each thing brute force independently. If I do that, it's very easy for me to count the total number of additions and multiplications. But will that be the minimum number? Obviously not, right? Look at L, L4, L5, L6. It's showing up in each term L1, L2 and L3. Okay, So at least there are terms which are repeating which you don't have to re-evaluate re for each capital L1, L2 and L3. Okay, But there is also something that is more hidden. There is a smarter trick that you can use to minimize the number of multiplications. What is that? <coughs> what is it that you can do? Yeah, So you can use the distributive law. right? How will you use the distributive law? If you have two, one term that is common between one L, small L, which is common between two terms, what can you do? You can pull it out and then your number of multiplications will go down. Right? Right? It's a simple principle. You have AB plus AC being equal to A times B plus C. Okay? There is nothing great about this expression, but if you count the number of computations you need, on the left hand side you need two multiplications, one addition. On the right hand side, what do you need? One addition, one multiplication. Okay? So you can use this and further simplify. 
and it is not at all obvious what the minimum number of additions and multiplications are okay i think in fact if you can figure it out for a general code you would become very famous it's a it's a complicated problem okay so <clears throat> but you see that using these distributive laws and evaluating all of them together as opposed to individually we can potentially simplify the number of computations okay and this will be crucial as we go along you can imagine why okay so right now i have a 6 comma 3 code so i have four terms in the numerator four terms in the denominator if i have a 1000 comma 500 code how many terms will i have in the numerator 2 power 499 okay in the denominator you will have another 2 power 499 there is no way you are going to be able to actually do it brute force okay it will not work okay if at all you have you are going to have any hope of evaluating these terms you will have to do you have to be smart about it you have to be very very smart about the computations okay so as we go along we'll see the one specific way of being smart about this computation but i want you to remember just to stare at this expression long enough it's not very clear how you go about it okay there is something non trivial here we will see that as we go along okay so how to simplify this the same problem can be posed even for the maximum likelihood decoder right if i give you r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 r6 and i tell you what is the minimum number of additions that you have to do to compute each of these correlations how will you answer that question <coughs> it's not clear how to answer that question right so because there are a lot of terms that show up in common okay and you have to spend a lot of time and it's not it's not very easy right and it's difficult to do but but as you will see i mean we'll be mostly worried about the bitwise map type decoder and not the ml decoder so we are more interested in that that aspect okay but these two things are clear right the bitwise map and the ml how do you write it how do you at least write the expression down So in the general case and try to evaluate it okay so it's also possible <coughs> to do the following simplification so typically people will deal with log of the likelihood ratio and not the likelihood ratio okay so you can see why that is useful what is log of l1 simply 2r by sigma square it's easy to do okay so if you do that what will happen to these expressions if i take log on both sides what will i get log of capital l1 is log of small l1 plus log of some nasty expression which you will probably not be able to simplify okay okay so 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 it's possible to think of it that way all your multiplications will become additions but but it's still it's not very easy to deal with that also okay that's one thing i want to point out before we move along i think uh, that should be good enough as a general introduction to bitwise map and ml decoder any questions on this i mean we can do one more example and write it down I'm going to do one more example. I'll do the repetition code example, but before that, if there are any questions, now is a good time because this this is a this is an important idea. It's slightly different, and it's tough to give examples, right? For syndrome decoder, I can actually give you a decoding example. Even for the uh, Reed-Solomon or BCS decoder, I can give you an example. It's not too difficult to imagine, but this is so painful. You know, I mean, you have to evaluate all these things. It's just a calculator example. Okay, the insight is very difficult to get. Okay, yes. <coughs> okay so the question is basically why do we want to think of it as intrinsic and extrinsic okay yeah right i mean there is there is no real special reason why you want to think of it as intrinsic and extrinsic separately it's just that when people wanted to simplify these expressions and evaluate it approximately it was found to be very useful to split it as intrinsic and extrinsic okay so all of that is for approximate evaluations in the exact evaluation yeah there might be better structure if you have the l1 and l2 inside maybe the way to describe that is simpler okay so the next one question one more thing i want you to think about before we move to to other things that we will see in this class is how do you go about analyzing this decoder what do i mean by analyzing this decoder how do you compute probability of decoding error for this for these two decoders okay let's start with the ml decoder okay how would one compute think about it how, how would one compute probability of decoding error for this ml decoder what is the what is the approach what should you how should you start <coughs>
it's confusing huh? <laughs> it's not so clear right so to better answer that question we'll see the same example for the repetition code okay and then we'll do a, some analysis for which is easy and then i'll come back to this okay so but if you can already see how to analyze this it's great but otherwise wait for the repetition code and then oh, see okay the next example we are going to see is the repetition code say the n equals 3 repetition code okay any any repetition code is the same you'll see the analysis is very similar the everything is very very similar okay so i want you to write down same things as we did before expressions for the bit ml and the bitwise map decoder for the repetition code <coughs> assume that you have r equals r1 r2 r3 being r3 r1 r2 r3 is being received from when you transmit a code word received with bpsk modulation over awg and so on Okay, so ML you'll see is very very easy. Okay, the correlations you have to evaluate are what? R1 plus R2 plus R3 and minus R1 minus R2 minus R3. If R1 plus R2 plus R3 is greater than minus R1 minus R2 minus R3, you're going to say the code decoded code word is 000. Else you're going to say it is 111, right? You can say simply else. You don't have to do more than one maximum. And if you simplify that condition. R1 plus R2 plus R3 is greater than minus R1 minus R2 minus R3. What will you get? You can move everything to this side. Okay, so you'll see ML decoding becomes equivalent to if R1 plus R2 plus R3 is greater than zero, C cap is 0, 0, 0. Okay, else C cap is 1, 1, 1. Okay, for the repetition code, it becomes very very simple okay so spend some time and write down the bitwise map <coughs> it's enough if you find capital l1 right any one bit is the message what is capital l1 l1 times l2 times l3 okay so if i write down the multiplication what do i get e power 2 by sigma square times R1 plus R2 plus R3. So, how will I make decision based on likelihood ratio? If the likelihood ratio is greater than 1, the received, the, the transmitted code word was 0, 0, 0. If the likelihood ratio is less than 1, the transmitted code word was 1, 1, 1, right? What is the likelihood ratio? Probability that the bit is 0 divided by probability that the bit is 1. If it is greater than 1, then it is 0. If it is less than 1, it is 1. So, when will e power something be greater than 1 and less than 1? Yeah, so e power x is greater than 0 if, greater than 1 if <coughs> x is positive and if x is negative, it is 0. So, that condition becomes equivalent to what? Exactly same as ml. Okay, so for the repetition code, both of them are the same. Okay, so this will not happen for other codes. It won't work out so nicely, okay. So, the repetition code, it's very, very nice. <coughs> okay, so let's talk about analyzing this. Okay. Yes. <coughs> In general, it will be very close. If you plot either probability of block error for both and probability of bit error for both, you will see it will be very, very close. There are some simple relationships between block error and bit error. So, it will be very close. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. So, how do you go about analyzing it? Okay. The first question I will ask you is, are you familiar with the analysis for BPSK AWGN when there's no coding? Okay, I hope you're all familiar. What is the probability of error for that? In terms of some function, the Q function, right? Q of 1 by sigma. The way I picked it's plus 1 minus 1. So, probability of error is Q of 1 by sigma, right? So, that, that's the uncoded case. 
Okay, we'll have to start from there. If, if this is your constellation, plus 1, minus 1, <coughs> right? Probability of error is Q of 1 by sigma. What sigma? Sigma is the variance of the additive white Gaussian noise. How did I get 1 by sigma? 1, 1 is actually 2 by 2. The distance between plus 1 and minus 1 divided by 2. Okay. How do you come to how do you come up with this formula? Yeah, so you have to find the conditional distributions and do it. And then one assumption that's inherent in this is that both 0 and 1 are equally likely to be transmitted. Okay. So once you do all that, you'll get this simple expression, and q of x is the tail probability for the zero mean unit variance Gaussian random variable. Okay, so this is very standard digital probable digital communication stuff. I'm not going to spend much time on this. Okay, so now you can do a very simple extension of this to evaluate the probability of error for the repetition code. It's not very difficult. Okay, so what do I have to do? <coughs> yeah, so here in this case, it's just R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, so how did I evaluate this? This probability of error you'll see is the same as in the uncoded case probability of say for instance minus 1 given plus 1 was transmitted am i right am i right probability of error for this uncoded case is probability that <coughs> you decoded minus 1 given that plus 1 was transmitted how did i evaluate this i found the conditional distribution for r given that plus 1 is transmitted right find the conditional distribution for r given that plus 1 is transmitted and then evaluate the probability for that conditional distribution to be less than 0 that, that random variable should be less than 0 what's the probability of that same thing you can do here all i have to do is evaluate the conditional probability for r1 plus r2 plus r3 given that 0 0 0 was transmitted okay <coughs> and find the probability that that random variable will be less than 0. Okay? So, let us try to do that. Suppose I define D to be equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 okay, given that uh, C equals 0, 0, 0. Okay? Suppose I define this to be my random variable, decision random variable D if you will. What will be the PDF of D? want you to give me the exact specification for this d what is the pdf of d what is the distribution for d okay normal with mean 3 and variance 3 sigma square does everyone agree okay given that you transmitted plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 the 3 r1 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 and r2 and r3 become independent so each of them is gaussian with mean 1 and variance sigma square and i'm adding three independent gaussians so i'm going to get mean 3 and Variance 3 sigma square. So, what is the probability that d is less than 0? This is the probability of error, right? <coughs> Root 3 by sigma, do you agree? Everyone agrees? Which will be smaller, q of 1 by sigma or root 3 by sigma? root 3 by sigma, right? The tail probability you are increasing by, is that clear? Okay. So, <coughs> so this is how simple it is to do analysis for the repetition code. Can you extend this kind of an analysis for the ML code in the general case, maybe even the 6.3 case that we saw before? Is it possible, do you think? What do you have to do? not easy okay so you have to find some complicated uh, joint distributions which will not work out so easily okay so this in fact can be extended for any n suppose i do a n n1 repetition code what will be probability of error q of root n by c okay <coughs> So, it sounds as if I can get as low a probability of error as I want just by increasing n, right? Which is true. I mean, which is true to an extent, you will see, but there is a hidden thing here which will give you, give you some bad news soon enough. So, this is not the best code out there. There is an obvious reason for it. 
we'll come to it as we go along but <coughs> but for now at least this analysis can be done okay so there is two points to this analysis one is to say that the analysis in the general case is very difficult okay for ml decoding even okay so if you move to bitwise map how do you think we will extend this analysis how can you extend an analysis like this for bitwise map how would you do it what's the way to do it you have to actually find the pdf for l1 conditioned on a particular code word and then see when it will become less than 1 or greater than 1 okay well at least that seems like the brute force simple approach okay do you think you can possibly do it it's much more difficult right it involves products and it involves ratios these things are not that easy okay <coughs> it's not going to be easy it's going to be very difficult let leave alone doing it for a 1000 comma 500 code okay for a 63 code it's, it's difficult enough you can't even imagine doing it for a 1000 comma 500 code once again the reason why i'm doing it is later on we'll see a way of analyzing an approximate version of this bitwise mapd code at that time when most people look at it for the first time they say hey this is a very approximate way of analyzing it maybe this doesn't even hold okay but believe me the fact that you have at least some analysis is is highly significant okay so because these expressions are not easy to deal with you can't even don't even know what they are right the fact that at the end of the day you have even some way of analyzing it and saying my probability of error will behave like this if i do this decoder for such a large code that itself is amazing okay so again i want you to have that wonder when we come to it okay so that's why i'm trying to give you a glimpse of how difficult it is to do analysis for these soft decoders any soft decoder is usually very hard to analyze okay and the two these ideal decoders are very difficult to analyze okay so another point of doing this analysis for the repetition code is in both cases you saw <coughs> the probability of error was a function of what it was a q function but forget about the q part of it i want function of what variable sigma okay so that's one to start off with you say it's sigma okay but i can be a little bit more clever and say it's a function of 1 by sigma okay so i can say that right in both cases it's a function of 1 by sigma in fact you might be used to the way uh, used to the definition of snr right signal to noise ratio what's the signal to noise ratio for bpsk over awg 1 by sigma square I would not be wrong even if I say in both cases it's a function of 1 by sigma square, right? In both cases we saw it was a function, bit better rate was a function of 1 by sigma square which is actually the SNR for the BPSK over AWGN situation, okay? So one might from here extend and say probability of error, okay, can be studied as a function of SNR which is 1 by sigma squared. Okay, there's, a, there's lots of practical merit in doing this. Okay, when you go back from coding theory to the world of actually building communication systems, you need some language in which you have to describe yourself to the engineer out there who's going to be building complicated circuits, right, power amplifiers and all that. And you need a common language and SNR turns out to be a wonderful common language and it's really great that in our model, the SNR controls bit error rate. Okay, then it means the SNR that you can describe in practice, right? <coughs> For practical systems, you can think of SNR, right? Signal power divided by noise power. All that has meaning even in our model, which is very nice. Okay, so you'll see typically people will plot probability of error as a function of SNR. What kind of a function do you think it will be as a function of SNR? It will hopefully be a monotonically decreasing function of SNR. Right? When you increase SNR, what should happen to the probability of error? It should decrease. Right? One hopes that it will happen. Okay? If you do a proper decoder, it will happen and you expect that to happen. Okay? It's also typical to deal with SNR in the decibel scale, dB. Okay? So what's the dB definition? 10 times log base 10, 1 by sigma square. <coughs> okay all right so <coughs> so in the uncoded case 
suppose I want a better rate of 10 power minus 6. Okay, that's a good point, no? 10 power minus 6. Okay, what is the SNR that's typically required? You might know this number in dB for BPSK over AWG. And Q of X, when does it become 10 power minus 6? Okay, maybe you should know this number by heart, but even otherwise, it's around 12 dB, 13 dB, or maybe 10 dB, some, somewhere around that, that number, okay, 12 or 13 dB. Q of 1 by sigma, when plotted over SNR in dB, will come to 10 power minus 6. Okay, so let's do that plot for the for, for just for just for reference here. Suppose if I were to plot probability of error versus SNR in dB. Okay, so it's always typical whenever you see books or papers that deal with coding, they always have <coughs> first of all an uncoded plot. Okay, so an uncoded error rate would behave something like this and you will see most plots will stop at 10 power minus 6. Okay, so 10 power minus 6 is considered 0. Okay, so you have achieved everything you want to achieve if you come down to 10 power minus 6 and this point is around let us say 13 dB. Okay, so just to give you a firm number let us say it is around 13 dB. <coughs> okay, this is uncoded. Oops, sorry. Okay, so b using using all the experience you have, understanding Q functions, understanding DB. Okay, hopefully you have a lot of experience doing all that. I want you to plot on this same graph the bit probability of error for the repetition code, for the n equals three repetition code. <coughs> How far will it be away from the? Okay, so this is what? This is a plot of Q of square root of SNR, right? So I want you to plot probability of error for the n equals 3 repetition code. What is for the n equals 3 repetition code? It is Q of square root of what? 3 times SNR. So, if I were to do all the dB conversion carefully and plot it on this, where will it be? Shifted left by? Left or right? Left. Hopefully, shifted left, right? Why is left shifting better? Yeah, lower SNR, you get the same probability of error. That's what you want, okay? That's what you hope coding is going to give you, okay? So, <coughs> so how many dB will it shift to the left? Factor of 3 is? Yeah, some 4, 4 and a half, whatever, whatever number, okay? So, you will get a curve which is shifted to the left, okay? Okay, and like these guys are saying, this is for the n equals 3 repetition code and this might be something around 10 dB, let us say, you know, 10 or 9 dB, okay, whatever, okay? So, this part you can claim is coding gain, okay? But remember, this is not coding gain. One can one can I will come back and define coding gain okay so do not worry about it you do not usually define coding gain with respect to SNR because there is a problem there we will come, come back to it soon enough but that difference you can construe as something you have gained okay okay one can think of it that way okay, <coughs> okay. so that is one utility for SNR you can plot your probability of error versus SNR for the AWG in case BPSK over AWG and and it seems to have a good interpretation in practice for building communication systems as well as in theory for it trying to see how much you have gained by doing coding. But there is a deeper, uh, deeper, uh, what do I say, deeper insight, not insight, deeper truth to this using SNR, okay, for BPSK over AWGN, over AWGN. I am going to quickly state it, do not worry too much about understanding this at this point, maybe when you read more more about communications and information theory and all that it may makes more sense to you but one of the another justification that one can think about is what's called capacity okay okay so so this is a key idea capacity capacity and information theory and all these arguments is what justifies coding why do you want to do coding maybe you can do something else to improve your better array right why do you want to repeat something why do you want to add redundant information okay so all those questions you have to ask first right even before you entered this course, maybe you should have asked this course. Maybe maybe that's the question you should have asked in the first class, right? Why do you want to do coding? Maybe there is some other way of improving your bit error rate. 
okay there are, that could be right why do you want to do coding why is coding supposed to be really good all those arguments capacity is the culminating argument for all that i mean that's its justification for the whole thing okay so how does this work okay so i'll try to write down uh, write down a brief quick description i want you to think about it then we'll we'll use some notions of capacity but just 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 very briefly okay i won't i won't i won't go into great detail here okay <coughs> suppose i have a channel okay capacity is supposed to be for channels okay okay i'll start with the simplest possible channel that we saw okay so it's a binary symmetric channel with probability of transition p okay i have some input i have a binary input i would get a binary output okay <coughs> so what capacity tells you is the maximum rate at which you can transmit across the binary symmetric channel or, or across any channel with arbitrarily low probability of error okay i have to be very careful when i define all these things okay so let me repeat that once again and then i'll qualify each of those things capacity tells you the maximum rate at which you can communicate across a noisy channel with arbitrarily low probability of error okay that's what it says okay but first of all first question you have to ask is why arbitrarily low why can't you say zero okay so ideally you want zero probability of error right but if you look at binary symmetric channel and if p is not zero can you ever have zero probability of error no you won't have okay whatever you do <coughs> whatever you do if you want to send even any non zero amount of information if you don't want to send any information yeah you can have zero probability of error but then you won't have any information to send you'll achieve only zero rate if you want to send anything <coughs> anything at all okay you will have a non zero probability of error that might be clear to you from just by looking at the probability of output okay so you can never have zero probability of error so the way to get around that is to allow an arbitrarily low probability of error what what do i mean by arbitrarily low probability of error given any epsilon greater than 0 okay what is arbitrarily low okay so let me write down this this is this is the notion of arbitrarily low okay given any epsilon greater than 0 what do i mean by that you give me any any positive number okay don't give me 10 okay so because i want to make probability of error less than that okay so think of the moment i write down epsilon you know you're all you're always thinking of 0.1 0.01 right by training you know epsilon is a small number right <coughs> you, you assume that okay so given any epsilon greater than 0 so so oh, no i don't want to say i okay one can transmit at rate okay remember i have not told you what rate is rate less than capacity with probability of error less than epsilon <coughs> okay okay so that's the that's the connection between that's the meaning of arbitrarily low probability of error when interpreted in terms of capacity in fact capacity means something stronger it means if you have rate greater than capacity what can you not do you cannot transmit at arbitrarily low probability of error which means there will be a finite probability of error below which you cannot go if you are at rate greater than capacity so capacity is is the best you can do <coughs> okay right you can do it and you cannot do anything <coughs> better than that okay so that's the operational meaning of capacity and this notion of arbitrarily low probability of error okay if you're really confused you don't want any epsilon in your notes you can simply say 10 power minus 6 okay just keep 10 power minus 6 as your epsilon <coughs> okay capacity is the rate at which the maximum rate at which i can transmit and still achieve 10 power minus 6 probability of error <coughs> okay so theoretically the notion says given any epsilon i can transmit so what do we mean by rate okay for the binary symmetric channel what do we mean by rate <coughs> okay rate is measured in terms of number of bits transmitted per channel use okay so that's the definition of rate number of information bits
per channel use. In one channel use, how many bits can I put out into the channel? For the BSE, one bit, right? Right? I can put out one bit into the channel. Okay. <clears throat> what do I mean by rate then? Why is why is the operational meaning coming in? Sub then if I actually have each of those bits as being information bits, if I keep sending one bit, one information bit every channel use, can I achieve arbitrarily low probability of error? No, not if you have P not being zero or one. Okay. Well, P less than half is what we consider. So if P is not zero, <coughs> you can never achieve arbitrarily low probability of error with rate one. Right. If, you, if you don't do, if you keep sending one information bit every time, you will get errors. There's nothing you can do to avoid it. <coughs> okay, and it will, <coughs> it will stop at some some finite finite point also. That also we can show. Okay. <coughs> if I do coding, then I can get rates less than one. Right. If I take k information bits. <coughs> Excuse me. Convert them into n channel bits, n bits which I want to transmit on the channel. I'm sending k over n information bits per channel use, and that's my rate. Okay. <coughs> okay. So that's the connection with rate. And I said one can transmit. <coughs> what do I mean by one can transmit? Okay. Just loosely use that word transmit, and everybody was happy. Okay. But what do I mean? I have to tell you how to encode. And how to decode or how to transmit? Okay, how do I map my bits into channel bits? <coughs> what do I do? It turns out coding is good enough for that. It turns out you can show there exists a code of sufficiently high block length, which will achieve arbitrarily low probability of error under some kind of decoding. Let's say maximum likelihood decoding. Okay, I don't care. There are even other types of decoding which will achieve that. Okay. So that's where coding comes in and that's why coding is so vital for a communication system. Okay, let me rephrase my definition for capacity now. <coughs> capacity tells you as long as your rate is less than capacity, there exists a code, an error correcting code, maybe not a linear code, some code, there exists a code, okay, according to which you can encode, transmit across a BSC. And then receive the received vector and decode according to that code by maximum likelihood decoding and achieve arbitrarily low probability of error. Okay, that's why coding becomes so vital for communication. Okay, so that tells you how to transfer. <coughs> okay, so let me rephrase and write that down very carefully. Okay, given any epsilon greater than 0, there exists n. Okay, so maybe let's say n is some function of epsilon. Okay, it's okay. I don't care. And n, n <coughs> large enough. Okay, no, let me be careful here. <coughs> n for which. Okay, so I'm 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 struggling with the. Uh, okay, so let me let me be careful here. Let me start with the code. Apologize for this. There exists an NK code for sufficiently large N. Okay, in fact, this could be a function of epsilon. Okay, in most cases it is. There exists an NK code for sufficiently large N with K by N approaching capacity. Okay, so let me say approximately uh, I think I guess approaching is the best way of doing it. K by N approaching capacity with such that sorry such that probability of error let's say under ml decoding okay so just to be very clear ml decoding or say bitwise map decoding whatever you want to choose there are in fact even other suboptimal decoders which will work here <coughs> less than 
epsilon. <coughs> okay, so think about what this means. Okay, and even the second statement is also true. If k by n is greater than capacity, then there will be no code for which probability of error can be arbitrarily low. Okay. <coughs> So this is why coding is supposed to be very important and supposed to be the one that the final tool for communication. Okay, so so hopefully this meaning is the meaning is clear when I say sufficiently large. So what will happen? For instance, if epsilon is if we say epsilon is 10 power minus 3, maybe I can say there is a n equals let's say 100,000. Okay, for which you will have a code which will achieve a probability of error less than. 10 power minus 3. If you, if you want my epsilon to be lower, say 10 power minus 15, then maybe my n will go up. Okay, but that doesn't that doesn't scare me too much. But I know there is the code as long as my k by n is less than capacity. But if my k by n is greater than capacity, I have no hope for of achieving arbitrarily low probability. <coughs> okay, so what is this capacity? Can it be calculated? Okay, for it can be calculated very easily. And for the binary symmetric channel, in fact, there is even a very nice closed formed expression if you accept logarithm as one of these things. Okay, so for the BSC capacity equals 1 plus p times log base 2 p plus 1 minus p log base 2 1 minus p. <coughs> okay, so you remember <coughs> once again let me let me stress the meaning of this capacity. Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> capacity is first of all defined in the context of achieving arbitrarily low probabilities of error. Okay. Given any epsilon greater than 0, given any probability of error 10 power minus 3, 10 power minus 6, you should be able to achieve it. Okay. Capacity characterizes those kind of scenarios and what is capacity exactly it's the maximal rate okay so you want to think of it in terms of rate what is that rate number of information bits per channel use so ultimately you might be able to convert it into a megabit per second or a kilobit per second okay that is just that just depends on the clock rate okay that's fine that you might be able to convert but <coughs> in theoretical terms it's number of ch information bits per channel use okay so that's the <coughs> that's that's what it <coughs> that's what capacity will also be and what it means is as long as you have k by n less than capacity okay there will be a code for sufficiently large n okay <coughs> which will achieve probability of error less than epsilon okay for any epsilon that you get but if k by n is greater than capacity even if you go for infinite n your probability of error will be finite it will never become arbitrarily low okay so capacity is kind of a nice demarking point and can it be calculated? Yes, using information theoretic tools, you can easily calculate. Not easily, well, at least for the binary symmetric channel, one can easily calculate. And what is it a function of? Function of p. Okay, so it's a very simple function. In fact, it will be between 0 and 1, and you can plot it. If you plot it, 0 and half, capacity will be 1 for 0. And for half, it will become 0. Okay, If you put p equals half, you will see it will become 0. Okay, And it will be a function which goes somewhat like this. Okay, It is, of course, not a linear function. But the point, halfway point, is achieved by something like 0.11. It okay, is a good point to keep in mind. So the capacity falls down to half by the time you go for p from 0 to 0 0.11. After that, it slowly decreases to okay the fall is steep <coughs> at the beginning that kind of a function it is okay <coughs> so suppose I have a channel binary symmetric channel with p equals let's say 0.11 in this case okay what is the maximum rate at which I can transmit half so what kind of codes should I be looking at for that channel 1000 comma 500 maybe 10000 comma 5000 okay no point in looking at anything more than that okay but maybe less than that is okay okay if in case you can't have a very practical algorithm for decoding all that maybe less than that is okay but you can never go to capacity rate greater than capacity because in that case 
you cannot get low probabilities of error okay so that's the operational meaning of capacity so let's see what about bpsk over awgm <coughs> are there codes the question is are there codes which achieve all the points on this graph okay which can achieve capacity for bsc i think you can get close but you can't get very very close okay so there are some results strange results saying the ldpc codes which are currently one would say the most powerful codes that one can think of do not take you arbitrarily close to the capacity there is some result i think it's not very well understood but one needs more work for the binary symmetric channel <coughs> okay so let's move on to the other channel which is interesting to us which is the <coughs> bpsk over awgm channel okay so in this case also there is capacity okay for any channel there is capacity there is no problem but the capacity is more difficult to calculate okay difficult in the sense that there is no closed form expression you need a numerical integration routine that's all numerical integration is not that hard and it's a very well behaved function so it's not that difficult to do it one can do it <clears throat> the most interesting and surprising thing is capacity can you imagine what will it be a function of function of SNR, which is 1 by sigma square. Okay. In fact, it is a monotonically, whatever function do you expect it to be? Monotonically increasing function of SNR. As you have higher and higher SNRs, you can get higher and higher capacity. Okay. So this, all this, you can prove if you do an information theory class. You can write down the expression for capacity of BPSK over AWGN and you can prove that it's a monotonically increasing function of the SNR. Okay, so that's a nice thing to know. And there's a plot here, which I hope I'll be able to pull up of this capacity. Why doesn't it show my Okay, so this is this is a plot from a paper by Forney and Ungerboek that appeared in the Information Theory Transactions. It shows capacity for a lot of things, but I want you to. <coughs> <coughs> so basically, it shows capacity for MPAM. Okay, what is MPAM? MPAM, not just BPSK, which is 2 PAM, 4 PAM, 8 PAM, 16 PAM. It shows capacity of all those things. As a function of signal to noise ratio one can show for all those things also even for MPAM capacity is purely a function of the signal to noise ratio okay so <coughs> it shows a plot of all that so you see the 2 PAM plot can you see it it's clear enough right it starts at 0 and saturates at 1 does it make sense that the 2 PAM capacity should maximize at 1 yeah you can't do more than 1 right per channel use the maximum we can send is 1 bit okay it's binary for 4 PAM, you will see it will saturate at 2, 8 PAM it will saturate at <coughs> all those things. Okay, I am sorry. Okay, so I will tell you this. There is also something called Gaussian inputs. Okay, suppose you have an AWGN channel without restricting the constellation. I do not care about what constellation you use. Use whatever constellation you want. Then it turns out the ideal thing to do is use Gaussian input. Your input should have a Gaussian distribution. That also you can prove. You can prove using information theory. Okay. And if you do Gaussian inputs, you can show the capacity is a very nice closed form expression. Half log 1 plus SNR. Okay. It is a very simple and nice expression. And that is the plot that is sh shown as a dotted line there. <coughs> okay. Okay. So, if you do any course in information theory, you will see how to generate this plot basically. Okay. Maybe one can interpret one can define a course in information theory as a simple method, <laughs> basically a course to tell you how to generate this plot. Okay, maybe this is what you do at the end of the course. No, you do so many other things, but this is one of the things you would learn in a course in information theory. Okay, but anyway, let's let's forget about all that. Let's just look at the capacity for BPSK. There's also an interesting point there, which says 
probability of error is 10 power minus 6 that is for the uncoded case suppose i do bpsk without any coding at what snr will i achieve 10 power minus 6 probability of error that is that point you see that point is roughly around 13 db or so <coughs> okay around 13 db you will get 10 power minus 6 probability of error uncoded transmission rate 1 okay rate 1 uncoded transmission you will get 13 db 10 power minus 6 probability of error now if i say i can live with rate half okay look at the plot and tell me what's the snr i need okay it's somewhere here right okay where is it it's somewhere there it's about 0 db okay where is 13 db and where is 0 db okay so maybe if you're not used to these db numbers you can if you can talk to maybe your friends or maybe your fact profs who are in circuits and talk to them about building power amplifiers and tell them i need something which is sensitive which, which can boost up my signal by 13 db or which need not boost up at all what do you how do you think they'll respond 13 db is such a huge number it's probably lakhs and crores of rupees that's what it means okay building power amplifiers it's such huge gains it's not the easiest thing in the world to do okay and look at the difference without any coding and with coding there is about a 13 db difference okay so but you might say there but however i get rate one there and you get only rate one by two here okay in fact it's possible to normalize with respect to rate and still get a coding gain of about 10 db close to 10 db let's say nine and a half db okay i'll tell you how to do that normalization shortly okay it's possible to look at both these rate half and rate one and normalize it so that you spend the same energy this is this this is a simple way of doing it we'll do that but still this is <coughs> this shows you how important coding is for practical communication systems if you do coding you can save cost by saving the power of the signal that is required okay and that's a huge savings in almost all communication systems okay any questions on this plot something that's worrying you or any number that you want explained <coughs> it's fine okay so so why did i bring this up the there are several reasons for bringing this capacity up i mean you, maybe you don't maybe you don't need to see it but it turns out all these new codes that we are saying ldpc codes and all that can operate very very close to capacity in fact for rate half people have found okay you won't believe it people have found rate half ldpc codes that are within 0.0045 db of capacity what do i mean by that so you see from this plot it's roughly about 0 db but it's actually the actual number is 0.2 db around 0.2 db okay for rate half the signal to noise ratio you need for rate half is roughly around i'm quite sure yeah it's around 0.2 db okay people have found rate half ldpc codes which can give you 10 power minus 6 bit error rate or block error rate or bit error rate with only a 0.0045 db penalty which means it will give you a 10 power minus 6 bit error rate at what 0.2045 db okay right so you can't get much closer to capacity than that okay so you can get very very close to capacity with ldpc codes and that's very non trivial and that's that's the power of these new methods okay that's why it's important to see this capacity curve and know that the whole point of these modern codes is to get you close to capacity okay so now i want to mention briefly about this rate normalization so how do you compare an uncoded system which is transmitting at rate one and a coded system which is transmitting at rate half there seems to be a penalty there which i'm not accounting for in snr right snr doesn't account for the rate whether you do rate half or rate 1 by 10 or rate 1 by 100 snr is still 1 by sigma square but that's a little bit unfair okay so we'll see how to <coughs> normalize that and that's that's done by using this notion of eb over n naught okay that's what we will do there's another way of doing it but we will see only eb over n naught okay so basically the way to think of eb over n naught is this is <coughs> basically normalized okay rate normalized snr Okay, so that's the way to think about eb over n naught so the first thing is <coughs> noise okay so far we've been thinking of noise as 
noise the only thing that matters is sigma square right so there's a very simple relationship between n naught and sigma square okay so n naught is sigma squared by 2 okay so there's no reason to go to n naught you, you, you might have lived with eb over sigma square itself okay so n naught and sigma square have no real difference okay? it's only divided by 2 okay in fact there are some papers which still plot over eb over sigma square but just that the convention is everybody uses eb over n naught and you also shift to eb over n naught okay it doesn't change much this is not really a normalization simple scaling okay the change comes in eb okay eb is 1 by r okay so what is this one this one is uh, energy of bpsk <coughs> Okay, so how did I get that one? I, so I'm assuming my constellation is what? Plus one and minus one. So what's the energy I would be doing? Plus one with probability half and minus one squared, which is again plus one with probability half. So I got my energy to be one. Okay, the in general, the, the right way of writing it is ES by R. Okay, where ES is the <coughs> energy per channel symbol, energy per modulated symbol, average energy per modulated symbol. Okay, for instance, instead of plus 1 and minus 1, if I make it plus a and minus a, what would es be? a squared. Okay, so it's a simple, simple uh, definition like that. But since we have already already fixed it at plus 1, minus 1, I can simply define it as 1 over r. And you see eb is normalized by rate. Okay, What is this eb? This is energy per information bit. Okay, Am I right? Okay, what is this R? R is K over N. Okay, if I divide by R, will I get energy per information bit? Yeah, I will know. So if I divide by R, what happens? EB becomes ES times N divided by K. Okay, to send K information bits, I am using N modulated symbols of total energy, total average energy n times es so the average energy per information bit well it's all average okay remember that's all average i won't mention that but it's, it's average clearly okay so the total en 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 energy that i'm expending to send k information bits is actually n times es divided by k okay right so that is eb okay <coughs> if i compare a coded system and an uncoded system with respect to eb over n naught it is a fair comparison okay if i compare with snr it is not a fair comparison because i am not accounting for energy per information bit as long as i account for energy per information bit i am doing a fair comparison okay so whether i do rate half or rate one as long as i account for energy i am spending per information bit it's a fair comparison okay <clears throat> there's also another way of thinking about it you might say just because i am doing rate half I will I will have to transmit slower, right? If my channel clock is flick fixed, if I do rate half, I can only achieve half of that. But there's another way to think about it. You can actually double your channel clock and use a rate half code, right? Do you understand what I mean? Double your channel clock and use a rate half code. What will that mean in practice in an AWGN system? When you double your channel clock, what will happen? Bandwidth is doubling. So what will happen at the receiver? More noise will be let in. So your signal to noise ratio will increase. In what proportion will it increase? Exactly by R. Signal to noise ratio will decrease, I am sorry. It will decrease by R. So this dividing by R takes care of two things. One is, one is this energy per bit at the transmitting end. Another way to think about it is, if you keep energy per bit as the same, but you double your clock rate okay then you would get more noise in and it would it would represent that noise also okay so even those, those are two ways of thinking about this eb but this normalization makes it fair okay it makes the comparison between a less than one rate and rate one or any two rates fair it's a fair comparison because you're doing a normalized thing okay so even if you didn't understand it too much if you're doing a digital communication course think more about this what it means mm, how, various ways of getting less than rate less than one to be the same as rate one okay it's possible to do that okay so all these things are okay
Okay. So now let, let's go back first and try to do B, probability of error versus EB over N0 in DB for the repetition code. Okay. So before, before we go there, let's see what's EB over N0 finally after doing all these things. You'll see it will be 1 by 2R sigma square. Okay. EB is 1 over R. N0 is Oh, did I do make a mistake? Oh, n not by 2 is sigma square. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Apologize for that. I'm sorry. Okay. So, this is how it works. <coughs> okay. So, in DB, usually it's again quoted in DB. EB over n not in DB would be what? 10 times log 10 of 1 over 2R sigma square. Okay. So now, I want you to plot probability of error versus EB over N0 in DB for first the uncoded system. Let us do the uncoded first. <coughs> for uncoded, what is R? 1. Okay, So 1 by 2 sigma square as opposed to 1 by sigma square. Okay, so it will move by a factor of 2, 2 is what roughly in dB. Yeah, so roughly around 3 dB. Okay, so you got 10 power minus 6 at around 13, 13.5 dB. So 2, if you move by 2, you will get 10 power minus 6 at 10.5 dB or so. Okay, so that is how it will work. Okay, so around 10, 10, 10.5 dB or so, you will get 10 power minus 6. Okay, this is for uncoded. Okay, on top of this, I want you to plot probability of error for the repetition code. Let us say the 3, 1 repetition code versus EB over N0. Remember, for the repetition code, what is R? 1 by 3. Okay, so, I have to account for that. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay, just, one, just to remind you how, how this works, okay. The channel is the same. It is the same BPSK over AWGN, same noise variance. But if you change the rate, what will change? SNR does not change, but what changes? EB over N0 changes. If you do uncoded, you have 1 EB over N0. For the same sigma, if you do a rate 1 by 3 transmission, your EB over N0 is different. Okay, remember that. For the same sigma, it is different. Okay, That is how it works. So, I want you to plot probability of errors for the other case. So, probability of error for the uncoded case. Sorry. Probability of error equals Q of root SNR, but SNR is what in this case? SNR is 2 times EB over N0, right? Root of 2 EB over N0. Okay, what is it for the <coughs> for the repetition code? Let us say the 3, comma 1 repetition code. What is probability of error? It is Q of root 3 times SNR. But if you go to EB over N0, what happens? You simply get 2 EB over N0, right? Do you agree? So, what will happen if you plot probability of error as EB over N0 for the repetition code? You will get the exact same plot as the uncoded case. So, if you account for the rate and then ask for the coding gain, what, what, what happens when you do a repetition code? You get zero coding. In fact, you can do it even for the n comma 1 repetition code. And for the n comma 1 repetition code, probability of error will be the same. Q of root 2 EB over n0. <coughs> it will not be it will not be in any way different. Okay, So, maybe I will do another color here. No, I can do another color. I know I can do other colors. Let's do this. Okay, exactly on top, this other guy will also lie. Okay. Okay, so think about what this means. Okay, so there are a lot of things that are going on here. If you are seeing this EB over N0 for the first time in your life, you will be a little bit confused about this. Okay, so what does it mean when I say the same sigma? Just because I change rate, there is different EB over N0. Okay. 
so what does it mean just because i went for a went to a lesser rate to be fair i should be able to tolerate a higher noise variance right i went for a lesser rate which means my clock speed on the chan channel has gone up which means i'm letting more noise in my noise variance is automatically going up so i should be able to tolerate that okay and it turns out the repetition code is not doing any better it is only tolerating it enough to make it equal to the uncoded case okay it's not doing any better so the repetition code in terms of eb over and not gives no coding gain okay so you'll see people typically don't use repetition code in practice practice okay so no coding gain for repetition okay so <clears throat> it turns out obviously there are um, codes which will give you coding gain okay so obviously it's there and uh, we will we will see some examples first we, i'll show you this plot and show you how some codes behave on this plot and then we'll maybe go back and look at this other codes out there of course there are codes which will give you coding gain and of course there are codes which can give you coding gain the maximum possible coding gain which is guaranteed by capacity okay so all these things we'll see we'll uh, see in the next class i think i'm, I'm almost done i'll stop here this is a good point to stop and we'll pick up from here think more about this repetition code and eb over and not and convince yourself that you have understood this plot very correctly okay